Good morning. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to worship on this day, as gray as it is outside. We celebrate and honor the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, who gives us hope and joy in the midst of gloom. Let us begin with our opening acclamation found in your leaflet. Blessed be God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All secrets known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Amen. Psalm for this morning is Psalm 100. Please respond with the response, God's faithfulness endures from age to age. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before God's presence with a song. Know this, the Lord alone is God. God alone has made us, and we are the Lord's. We are God's people and the sheep of his pasture. God's faithfulness endures from age to age. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving. Go into the courts of the Holy One with praise. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon Yahweh. For the Lord is good. The mercy of the Holy One is everlasting. And God's faithfulness endures from age to age. God's faithfulness endures from age to age. Reading from the Epistle of Paul to the Church at Ephesus. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, 
may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty. You gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'm going to try preaching from up here because I think it might be easier for our friends who are joining us this morning on Zoom to see and hear me. But if you who are here present are unable to hear me, please wave so that I can up my volume and even will consider if I need to move back down closer to you. We have today a very special moment in the church. It's the equivalent of New Year's Day as the church. Today we are 
celebrating the last Sunday in the liturgical calendar, Christ the King. Next Sunday, we will begin anticipating the birth of Jesus. It is a season of pivot points. We're going deeper and deeper into the darkness of winter, and we will celebrate not only the birth of Christ, but in a sense, the power of God to bring the small seed of a little infant into this world who would be the light of the nations. So it's a wonderful kind of coalescing of all the ways in which the season, our lives, even in these circumstances, and uh, the power of Christ to bring us hope. But today we're celebrating that the very end of the whole trajectory of that narrative. We're celebrating that someday Christ the King, Christ the Pantocrator, as uh, Evan depicted for us in the tradition of the iconographers, Christ the leader, the ruler of the cosmos. We're celebrating the return of that Christ today, naming Christ the sovereign of our hearts and our lives. So I wanna take a minute with you and think about that Matthew 25 text. We see in it the continuing metaphor that we heard in Ezekiel of Christ as the shepherd, of Christ even in the second coming, doing a sort of sorting of people as if they are sheep and goats. But there's another theme going on there that I want to explore with you. And it's a theme that in the Hebrew tradition is called Shaleach, Shaleach, and I might be pronouncing it wrong, but the concept is what Jesus states, what Christ the King states in Matthew 25 several times. Whatever you have done to the least of these, my children, you have done to me. This concept is not new to the New Testament to Jesus. It's a concept that comes through both in, in the Hebrew tradition and also in the patronage system. If I send a representative of me, like say I send my son to talk to you, in that tradition, if it's official business, then whatever my son says is me. And whatever you do to him, you're doing to me. This is especially true when you are talking about people in power. So you can imagine in other parables where Jesus speaks and he says that they, he sent a servant to collect the rent from the vineyard and they treat that servant poorly. It's not simply in our understanding that they're treating the servant poorly. They are disrespecting the king. And here we see it again. And so we have the king of the universe telling us, here's how you treat the king. So I'm imagining that if I were the king of the universe and I had people that I was going to judge based on what they did, I might put the ante up pretty high. I might say, you know, like, go do this amazing uh, mission for me and come back and tell me that you've done all these things. I might say, you need to climb the highest mountain. You need to get me all this wealth. But instead, in this text, for these people, these sheep and these goats, it's actually a pretty low bar. You notice that? And not only is it a low bar accessible to every single human being that's ever lived on this planet, but it's also a very immediate bar. It's not like go do something that's going to take you 20 years. It's do something right this minute that will help my children, that will bring them love, that will uphold them. And sometimes we are the children who are sick or naked or hungry or thirsty. So we are a part both of the receiving and the giving end of this call of this judgment from the sovereign king. So let's think for a minute about the shaliach and how did these goats fail, right? They didn't fail insofar as they didn't uh, do these things because odds are every single person alive has at some point given a thirsty person a drink, right? I mean, I would think that's the exception to the rule. 
And it's not that they didn't clothe the naked. They didn't see that what they were doing was shaleach. They didn't see that this activity was sacred. And therefore, if it's not sacred, it's disposable, right? You can do it at your will, at your whim. They didn't see how full of the power and love of God to lift and restore the whole creation these simple acts could be. And therefore, they are separated. They are separated from God because they do not see the meaning and purpose of this. Now, this text is particularly important, and Jesus is very specific in the language that he uses, that this is the nations. These are the people who may never have heard about Jesus, may never have actually had the same kind of religious tradition that any of us have. But they still have access for the capacity to see that creatures are sacred and that our responsibility to one another and to all creation is a reflection of the creator. So who are these sheep? What makes them particularly special? Well, you know, sheep and goats are quite different. And one of the things that the goats tend to do is they tend to not flock. They tend to run off and not listen to the, the herd master, the, the shepherd of the flock of goats. The, the shepherd of a, uh, the goat herder has to use a stick or some other means to get the goats to go ahead of him or her. But the sheep have done this thing. They have heard the voice of the shepherd. They flock together and they follow the leading of that shepherd. So the, spe the specific metaphor that Jesus is using as he talks about this last judgment is saying to us, we have to be as followers of Christ listening for that voice and seeing how that voice is embedded in the now, in our present circumstances. Where do we find those opportunities to follow, to serve? Where do we see the naked? Or where do we see the hungry? And how do we acknowledge that those very people as flawed and fallen, as strange as they may be, are equivalent to our very Lord and Savior? My friends, if we have the ability to do something, we have the responsibility to do it. That is essentially what we are told in this text that every moment as we go forward, that is what we need to understand, that our eyes need to see the world as embedded with a call to love. It's hard to think about that right now. It's hard to think about how do you interact with people when you've got all this fraught COVID stuff and, and limited resources right now. But I tell you that God is making a way, even for us here at St. Paul's, to make a huge difference. Ever since COVID began, we have been getting more food, more volunteers, more capacity to make sure that the people around our building are being provided for. And now we're even widening that circle so that if there is excess food, we're going to pass it out to neighbors at your house. And we're going to facilitate how you might know people who need food and how we might bring it from here and give it to you to give to them. You'll be hearing more about that this week after I've met with the Urban League. It's a dark time. It's the darkest of times in our season. And yet here we have the power of God present to us in the smallest flames, people in need, people that we could so easily ignore. Jesus is saying, I'm with them in a way that when you serve them, you serve me. There's a saying that Leo Tolstoy says that we must add our light to the sum of light. That's essentially what Jesus is saying. I am the light of the world. So you bring your light. And when you do that, when you love, you are adding your light to the sum of light. There's a story that I read about uh, with Doctors Without Borders. 
and one of the doctors was serving in Gabon. And there, there was very little and unreliable electricity. So one night he gets called down to the operating room. There's a woman who's in labor and she's not able to deliver. And if they don't have a cesarean section immediately, she and the baby will die. So he goes out in the night and he's so grateful because at the moment they've got electricity and he's got his staff there and they all are getting ready to begin the cesarean. And just as they've started the operation, guess what? The electricity goes out. And here they are around this woman who is unconscious and the clock is ticking. And how are they going to do a delivery in the pitch dark? So one of his attendants grabs a laryngectomy tube thing that has a little tiny light and he shines it on this incision site. And another of the staff member goes and gets his cell phone and flips on the flashlight. And pretty soon there are three people who are shining their little feeble light onto that mother and they deliver the baby and they both survive. This is what we're called to do, my friends, to be the ones that carry the light we're given and to shine it in the moment we're at enough, uh, at now. And the good news is that's enough. We don't have to be chivalrous. We don't have to go off and do some epic quest. We don't have to become missionaries. We don't have to become the CEO of some nonprofit and raise millions for these needs. We are only and simply called to the moment we're in now and now and now. And how we cooperate with the Holy Spirit in those things is someday what will bring us to the joy of glory, to the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the earth, which is the first Eden, the first amazing, fruitful, beautiful place with the leaves that heal the nations and the tree of life. Whatever that may be, that's where we're headed. And today, when we give ourselves and recognize Christ in the needs around us, we are partnering as good and faithful servants. Amen. If you will stand with me and let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, uh, the Apostles' Creed, excuse me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son and our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. Through baptism, we have been raised with Christ, ordained to a royal priesthood, and made citizens in a holy nation. As faithful priests serving the King of Kings, let us intercede for all the world, saying, in the name of Jesus our Sovereign, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Sovereign Majesty, as your humble priest, we pray for all your children who do not confess you as Lord. Enable us to live the good news convincingly, that all may inherit life eternal in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus, our sovereign, hear our prayer. 
Almighty God, ruler of all nations, cause the leaders of nations to recognize your sovereignty and to accept your gracious rule. Make them proponents of peace and lovers of justice. Crown each ruler with compassion that all peoples may live in peace. In the name of Jesus, our sovereign, hear our prayer. Almighty God, merciful monarch, look with pity on all who suffer, those with incurable disease, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, the hungry, those without shelter, those who live without hope. Direct us toward them that their royalty may be reclaimed and their lives celebrate your grace. In the name of Jesus, our sovereign, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Lord of the church, we pray for your holy Catholic church on earth. Gather all who bear the name of Christ into one vigorous, fruitful community of faith. That the world may see one king of glory in one kingdom of grace. In the name of Jesus, our sovereign, hear our prayer. Almighty God, benevolent judge, we pray for all your people gathered here to seek your grace. By your mercy, prepare us for the day of judgment that we may welcome it as a rich and royal gift for the eternal joy of life with you. In the name of Jesus, our sovereign, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of all things, we pray for those in our community who are ill or suffering in a variety of ways. We remember especially Bob, Tracy, Al, and Dana, Tom, Eric, Betty, George, Paul, Eric, Shep, Stephanie, Henry, Dave, Sally, Indus, Maureen, Brooke, Mark, Hannah, and Michael. In the name of Jesus, our sovereign, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those celebrating wedding anniversaries this month in December. Barbie Click and Debbie Wheeler, Jennifer Heigerd and Matthew Harnish. May their unions be a source of love and witness of Christ's love for the church. In the name of Jesus, our sovereign, hear our prayer. Grant our petitions, O God, according to your perfect will, that your holy name may be praised and proclaimed until that day, when all the faithful shall gather before your throne in heaven through the merits of Christ our sovereign, in the power of the Holy Spirit, upheld by the creator of all things, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
I have just a few announcements if you'd like to be seated. It's lovely to be together today. We have what, about eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 of us in this room. So we've just about popped the, uh, the limit here, but it's so lovely to see each of you and so glad that to see those of you who are on Zoom and watching online, we, are, we welcome you to St. Paul's. So just a couple of announcements. Um, Compline continues on Wednesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Carol is going to be taking over, uh, helping to coordinate that so that we have consistency on leadership. And I, I'm glad and welcome her to that. Um, we have journals in the back and those online, if you wish to receive one, let me know. Um, these are for an Advent activity that will be going on. It's a daily journal that gives you the opportunity to do a reading, a reflection, and a prayer. And then there will be opportunities to go on and meet people from three churches in Carondelet and people as far away as New Zealand who are also doing this with us. And so it's a really interesting thing, uh, and I encourage you to do that. A suggested donation for the journal is $10. In addition, I'd like to invite Richard up to tell you about our Sunday afternoon Advent study that will be happening at 2 o'clock. Okay, if you can see this on the camera, here's the book. It's uh, by Wal Walter Brueggemann called Names for the Messiah. Just a very small book. You don't have to have it to participate, but easy enough to get wherever you order books. And uh, it's, a, it's a very small book. It's got uh, four studies on uh, various names of the Messiah found in Isaiah 9, 6, the familiar verse from the Messiah, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. So if you would be glad, be willing to join us on Zoom, uh, we'll start that next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Christ and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and eternal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Beloved, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food, with his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. And the Spirit's outpouring be upon you this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.